<clears throat> Recording in progress. Hi, Mr. Davis. Hello there, Connor. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing good. Good, good. Um, so, obviously, we're both busy men, so you have a copy of the questions I sent you, correct, earlier? I do, yes. If not, I have them right here. So, um, Okay, so let's just go from the top, right? Um, so describe to me what happened at the meeting last night. So, Connor, last night there was a meeting held for the WCRCC. That's the Winnebago County Central Committee Executive Committee, uh, and that was at Samino's uh, restaurant in Winnebago. Now, normally those meetings are held in private because there are meetings of the party. Uh, we conduct business th at those meetings. But uh, since uh, Chairman Eli Nicolosi has, has been at the helm, those have been held at various restaurants uh, around the region. And so we were at that meeting, uh, me and some other folks, uh, Jan Kloss, Wendy Iwano, Dwayne Ingram, Lowell Ingram. Uh, now, Dwayne Ingram is the current treasurer of the WCRCC. Jan Kloss is the former chairman of the party in the county here also a former deputy state precinct committee man. I believe Wendy Iwano is the Cherry Valley clerk. Um, and I am a, a member of the executive committee and I'm a precinct committee man for the local party. Uh, we wanted to present a letter of some concerns that have been raised uh, by us, other executive committee members and other Republicans in the community uh, regarding really not having any confidence in the leadership or lack thereof of Eli Nicolosi. Uh, we did not share that letter with the party prior to last night's meeting, and it was requested of the chairman to put that on the, the agenda for that night's meeting. Um, apparently, he did put something on the agenda. He passed out an agenda that said uh, things not approved by the executive would be addressed under new business. Um, so we planned to do that and hopefully have a discussion about these concerns. Um, unfortunately, in public, because uh, that's what has happened to our party, everything is held in public these days. Um, so uh, the beginning of what would have been the beginning of the meeting, the uh, chairman announced that there was not a quorum. Uh, the quorum required to hold business at our meetings is 15 members of the, exec the executive committee. Uh, and we noticed at the time that some people had left. The vice chairman, John Guevara, had left the room. Uh, let me see. Uh, also, Jason Unger, and Mel Welch, uh, people that are close with Eli. Uh, so it's believed maybe he was trying to reduce the number of participants so there would not be a quorum. But regardless, uh, we did our own count. We had 17 people there uh, on the executive committee. We only needed 15 to conduct the meeting. Uh, so even if uh, a few left, which we're not sure when or who left, uh, we believe that we did have a quorum to start the meeting. And because Eli uh, knew that this was going to be presented or something was going to be presented regarding criticizing his chairmanship, his leadership, uh, he, he said there's no quorum. Now, this was a packed house. There were many people uh, at this restaurant. It's a small venue, but it was full of people. We had the, the pro appropriate number of actual members to conduct business, and uh, he said that there was not enough and shut down the meeting. He said it's going to be a social hour instead. Um, prior to all this, as I walked in, Eli approached me and he said, Austin, the last meeting we had in November, uh, I talked to my attorney and he said I was right, right in shutting down new business, not, not allowing any new business to be addressed at that meeting either. Uh, I, I said, what, what attorney? He said, the, the party attorney, that's referencing John Fogarty, uh, a general counsel for the Illinois GOP. Now, I've met John. Uh, he seems like a nice guy. I don't know him well. But I doubt that he advised the chairman that what he did was proper. Uh, but, but Eli, uh, he can be uh, petulant at times. And he said, Austin, I was right. You were wrong. Uh, and then I said, OK, well, I passed out Robert's Rules of Order and our bylaws to everyone here tonight so they can decide how things should be handled at our meetings. Uh, he followed me around the restaurant. I said, hey, back off. Get out of here. So what are you going to do about it? Uh, I said, come on, get out of here. He said, don't embarrass the party, which I think uh, he was likely just projecting uh, his own concerns about embarrassing the party himself. Uh, we had uh, different state reps there, Tony McCombie, uh, Andrew Chesney, John Cabela, um, 
uh, as well as Esther Joy King. So, and how anyway, do they feel about it? Those those state reps. Uh, I don't want to speak for them. I've had conversations okay. with them, but I'm not going to speak for them. Um, That's totally fine. And, and so uh, after that, uh, Eli stuck around for a little bit. We decided to pass out our literature, our our, our no confidence letter to everyone in attendance. Uh, we did so. Eli asked me, do I get a copy? I said, sure, hold the meeting. I'll give you a copy. Just hold the meeting. Uh, and it was soon after that, that he, he tucked tail and, and ran out of there. Uh, the rest of uh, quite a few of us stuck around to, you know, uh, socialize. So uh, what caused you guys to band together with these concerns? Um, and uh, so who, who should I be calling? Who else should I be calling to confirm um, everything that's happened tonight? Would it be a, 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 a uh, I have it right here. Awona? Awusa? Is that the lady's name? Uh, Wendy Awano. Awano. That's the one. O -W -A -N -O and Dwayne Ingram. A-N-O is how you spell her name, I believe. Okay. And what caused all of you guys to band together with these concerts? Well, uh, really, we started uh, getting uh, increased concern over Eli Nicolosi's chairmanship of the party when we were looking to censure Adam Kinzinger. Uh, at the time uh, that it was known we were looking to do that, Eli went on a disinformation campaign telling other members of the executive committee. Now, these are just members from the community. They're not attorneys. They're not lawyers. They don't know Robert's Rules of Order, most of them. Uh, so what they're told by the chairman, uh, they, they may tend to believe or should believe in normal circumstances. So they were told a committee had to be formed. We couldn't censure them. There wasn't enough people uh, and all these things. And then when we went to hold the meeting to try to censure Adam Kinzinger, um, there was a, a bodyguard at the door only allowing certain people in. This was held at our headquarters for the, the one mm -hmm. occasion. And uh, we basically got something out of that that was a de facto censure of Adam Kinzinger, just not called a censure. Uh, but that caused us some concern how that was handled and that it appeared that Eli was trying to cover for and protect Adam Kinzinger, which the majority, vast majority of us did not agree with. Uh, there was also a vote to replace John McGlasson on the Illinois State Central Committee position uh, for our area, for the Illinois GOP. And Eli had promised to vote for the more conservative candidate who did not favor Adam Kinzinger. But of course, what did he do? He voted for the, the woman. I don't know her personally, but she does support Adam Kinzinger, is what was uh, told. And, and he voted for her instead. So there's, there's a history of uh, deception by Eli Nicolosi, uh, not also some financial issues that have brought great concern, uh, and that's listed in the letter of no confidence, uh, <clears throat> such as um, he's written checks, uh, according to the concerns uh, of, of the members we've talked to, he's written checks for both his state senate campaign and the WCRCC expenses out of the same WCRCC checking account using uh, checks that were uh, put his name and his address on them, not the WCRCC, some temporary checks. And then he used those uh, in relation to his Senate campaign. Uh, he said it was an accident. He would give back twice the money that he uh, accidentally withdrew. But he had these temporary checks with his name on them, but linked to the WCRCC's account. Now, he can't just go spend anything unless it's approved by the WCRCC, by the executive committee. Um, uh, so there's concerns that he's trying to run the party uh, to his own benefit dishonestly uh, by executive fiat. Uh, perhaps he's taking tips from the governor, uh, but we're not going to let that happen uh, here in our, in our county. And, and we, we'd rather have kept this private, address these concerns in private, but we're unable to do so. We, we can't have meetings. We can't have. Uh, so he's, he's just got to go. Right. Um, so tell me about Robert's rule of law, right? Um, what you guys, how you guys come in your meetings and why he broke it, how he broke it. Right. So we have our own bylaws. The WCRCC has bylaws that add certain specific things particular to our assembly, but we also incorporate Robert's rules of order. So if there's not a bylaw that conflicts with Robert's rules of order, those control. Most assemblies do this uh, in some way or another. And, uh, the Roberts rules that come into play, which our bylaws don't conflict with, is that uh, there's new business at meetings where the members can present new business, make motions, 
uh, run the meeting because it's run by the executive committee members, not just the chairman. The chairman kind of is supposed to oversee it. So what, what Eli has violated at, at the November meeting is that he would not allow new business to be presented. He told the room that he solely controls the agenda as the, the executive. No one else can ask him to put things on the agenda. Uh, it's his show. Uh, if, I'll point out some particular rules that were violated. Robert's rule uh, 4127 says that after unfinished business and general orders have been disposed of, the chair asks, is there any new business? Members can then introduce new items of business. So long as members are reasonably prompt in claiming the floor, the chair cannot prevent the making of legitimate motions or deprive members of the right to introduce legitimate business by hurrying through proceedings. But that's precisely what Eli did at that last meeting. He hurried through, he said, hey, let's adjourn, let me get a vote to adjourn, and, and shut everything down uh, in violation of the rules that we use to conduct our assembly, the WCRCC. Uh, as far as the agenda, a little sheet of paper he passes around of what he'd like to address before meetings. We get that the night of meetings. Robert's Rules of Order talks about that too. Rule 4162 says that unless a pre-circulated agenda is formally adopted at the session to which it applied, it's not binding, other than it conforms to the standard order of business. And Robert's Rule uh, 41.5 dictates that the standard order of business is comprised of these following subdivisions, including the last one, new business, where he has to ask members if they have new business to present. So the agenda that has historically been passed out prior to our meetings by Jim Thompson, the most recent chairman before Eli, uh, those are passed out. They're never adopted. We don't vote to adopt them. Things, aren't, mm -hmm. things are more uh, amicable. Uh, the chairman and, and the members of the executive committee have historically gotten along under the previous leadership. Uh, but, but basically, uh, the, the rules were violated. He's not allowing any of the members to speak. He wants it to be his party. He wants to control it. Uh, in the past, before he realized he couldn't put me under his thumb, uh, he asked me, I have some political campaign donors that I'd like to get the money to the candidates before we hold a meeting. I said, well, we can hold a special meeting of the executive committee to approve that. He said, well, there's no time. I don't want to. Uh, how can I just accept the money to the WCRCC account and then give that to the candidates and not tell anyone? I said, well, I don't know the legality of that. I'm not really a, a lawyer in that area, but it doesn't sound right. I wouldn't do it. Uh, I'd have a problem with that. Uh, I don't know if he's actually done that or not, but there've been expenditures by him that were not authorized by the executive committee, uh, mishandling of funds and, and some pretty serious issues. And, and at the end of the day, this could have all been handled in-house if you guys had been able to talk about it yesterday or in, even in November, right? Because that's the whole point. It's like you got, the reason why we got it is because that you guys couldn't talk about it there and it couldn't be handled internally. That's right. When a meeting uh, like, like this happens and there's uh, anything that's going to be discussed, it should absolutely be in private. So not only... Should the meeting be held in headquarters, but there should be an executive session of what is what it's called, which would be proper to go into. We can't do that at a restaurant with no meeting room, just a, a small restaurant. And so, yeah, if, if if we would have these meetings held at headquarters, if Eli would allow new business, allow members of the executive committee to speak and address these concerns with him and see how how we can maybe remedy the situation. Uh, this this could have been avoided. Uh, we wouldn't have had to conduct business in a public place. Right. All right. Well, Mr. Davis, those are all the questions I have for you. Is there anything I missed? Anything you'd just like to touch upon? Um, I don't think so. I think that covers pretty much we, everything. I, I, I think we hear everything. Okay, awesome. So I'm uh, I'm still obviously making some calls, get, uh, you know, putting this all, all the information I have together, but um, really appreciate the interview, and I'll shoot you an email if and when I know this story is airing. Okay? Actually, Connor, uh, there is one more thing I forgot to touch on. Yeah, and that would be one of the concerns listed in the no confidence letter. This is a mm -hmm. very important one for the party, anyway. Is that uh, and someone sent me this Excel sheet uh, that's helping out with these issues. And it shows that Eli, friends of Eli Nicolosi, his campaign for Senate against Dave Severson, shows a total campaign contribution amount of $95,000 some dollars. But if you look through who has contributed to his campaign, 
$86,750 of that $95,000 some dollars was from unions and trade councils, Democrat leaning ones. So the vast majority of what he's received for his campaign have been from historically uh, unions that support Democrats. And also on that list of campaign contributors is Sarah Dady. Now that is a lawyer who ran for Congress against Adam Kinzinger. Her office is right next to mine. Uh, she's a nice enough lady, nothing against her personally, but she is extremely liberal. So why is it that she's donating to Eli Nicolosi's Senate campaign against Dave Severson? I think that's a good question. Okay. Well, thank you so much. That is a, that is a very good point that you just brought up. But I really appreciate the time, and I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. Thanks, Connor. Thanks, Mr. Davis. Have a good one. You too. Great.